In this video, we continue our discussion on translation, which is the process of protein synthesis. And in this video, we will try to understand open reading frames and the process of transfer RNA charging. Alongside this, I will also point out some technical details about codons and anticodons. This video is a follow-up from the intro video where we focused quite a bit on the mRNA syntax, so you should definitely watch that before diving into this one. The link to that is in the description and also in the cards in the corner above. And after understanding the open reading frames and tRNA charging from this video, we will be ready to take a deep dive into the process of translation itself. Now just to set the stage for this video, I will quickly recap the mRNA syntax, which contains a 5' UTR that contains the ribosome binding site. This is followed by the start codon, and the message in the mRNA continues until the stop codon. Following stop codon, you get the 3' UTR, and that's the syntax of mRNA in prokaryotes. In addition to this, the mRNA in eukaryotes contains a poly A tail, at the 3' end, and their 5' end are capped with a specific chemical modification. In eukaryotes, the poly A tail and the 5' cap help in the translation in the cytoplasm. But in prokaryotes, there are no organelles. So when the DNA is engaged in transcription and the polymerase is making RNA, the ribosome binds to this mRNA and starts protein synthesis while transcription is happening. And now let's zoom into this part of the RNA where ribosome is bound. And then the ribosome reads the mRNA three base at a time. So this codon in the mRNA is a triplet, which is three bases at a time. And this specific sequence of triplets, starting at a given point that is read by the ribosome, until the stop codon defines the reading frame. Let's get a little concrete on this. Since we always start from AUG, which defines the next three bases, and then those three bases define the next codon, and so on, and this goes on until the stop codon. So this specific order of codons that is read by a ribosome from the starting point is what we call the open reading frame. Now let's expand on this idea for a bit. Say you have the sequence of bases in the mRNA. If you were reading this from base 1, you would end up with this specific order of codons, which would give you three specific amino acid corresponding to those codons. But this UGA is a stop codon, so ribosome won't get any further from this. But you get the point. Now you could imagine that this same set of sequence can be read by starting at the second position. And this would produce some amino acids as well. But they are different from the set of amino acids that result from the set of codons above. Now once again, you could move one more base and start reading the same sequence. And you notice that this set of codons is different from the set of codons that we just discussed previously. We can continue this exercise of moving one more base, and now you notice that you get UGA and ACA as the codons, which give you the B and C, which is exactly the same as our first example. So you can only have three reading frames. And each of this specific set of codons that are read are the open reading frames. The first one is called the plus one open reading frame, and if you move from that by one base, it becomes a plus two open reading frame. And if you move by two bases, you call it the plus three open reading frame. But as we just said, the plus four open reading frame looks just like the plus one. So technically, there is no plus four. If you do a plus five, you will notice that the plus five will look exactly like plus two, and so on. So you cannot have more than three open reading frames for a given mRNA sequence. Just to make it more clear, in the mRNA, which is a single-stranded nucleic acid, which goes from 5' prime to 3', prime, you can only have three open reading frames, the plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. But if, instead of looking at the RNA, you were looking at the DNA sequence, where you have a double-stranded structure, you will see that in one of the strands, say 5' prime to 3' prime strand, will give you a positive open reading frames, the plus 1, plus 2, and the plus 3. Then the bottom one, or the other strand, which in this case would be the 3' prime to 5' prime strand, because it is a complement strand, will also give you three open reading frames. But those reading frames would be inverted, and these are denoted by a negative symbol. So single-stranded molecules like mRNA have three open reading frames, and DNA, which is a double-stranded molecule, has six open reading frames in total. Now, you may be wondering, why do I need to understand this open reading frame concept? If you look at prokaryotes, 
and say you start reading the mRNA, and you get a specific open reading frame that is used to make the protein, quite often in prokaryotes, in the same mRNA, the ribosome will start reading codons at a different spot, which is in a reading frame that is not the same as the first one, and that gives rise to a different protein. This sort of mRNA structure is called polycystronic. Here's another example where multiple open reading frames get interesting. In viruses, for example, you can have multiple open reading frames that overlap with each other. So the same mRNA can now give rise to multiple proteins. And this is the case with coronavirus RNA genome. Overlapping open reading frames in the same mRNA also increase the amount of information that can be stored to make proteins. So these open reading frames are said to be present on the mRNA. And let's take this mRNA sequence here with a specific set of codons. These codons are recognized by transfer RNA, which pairs at the codons. The transfer RNA has a very specific secondary structure that we will see in a moment, and they are the RNA that come with an amino acid attached with them, which is then transferred to make a protein. And this pairing of messenger RNA and transfer RNA occurs at the catalytic site of the ribosome itself. So just to reiterate, the mRNA has codons and the tRNA has anticodons. Now let's get a little more concrete. Say we take this GCC codon, now notice that the transfer RNA goes in the opposite orientation. So you get CGG in the opposite orientation. So you have to notice that codons are written 5' prime to 3', prime, and anticodons are written 3' prime to 5'. Prime. So the 3' prime CGG to 5' prime cannot be written as GGC in 3' prime to 5'. Prime. But if you specify that it is in the form of 5' prime to 3', prime, then it makes more sense, which is the same as 3 prime CGG to 5 prime. If you're confused at this point, I recommend working out the orientation on a piece of paper by yourself. Now let's talk about tRNAs in a bit more detail, and also look at the process of tRNA charging. The tRNA gene on the DNA is transcribed by RNA polymerase, which makes the tRNA. And this tRNA takes on a secondary structure. In this secondary structure, you have specific parts, like D-loop region, the anticodon which pairs with the codon of the mRNA, which is a part of the anticodon loop region, and then there is this variable loop and a pseudouridin loop region. Towards the end, you have the acceptor stem. The 3' prime end specifically contains a few bases which are known as the discriminator bases. You don't need to know all these regions of the secondary structure of the transfer RNA but the important ones, we will just discuss them shortly. After this secondary structure forms, a specific enzyme recognizes the 3' prime end of the transfer RNA. This enzyme, called CCA adding enzyme, holds on to the 3' prime end of the transfer RNA while recognizing the discriminator bases. This enzyme has specific amino acids in its catalytic core, such that only the cytosine and adenine nucleotides can fit and they are the ones that get attached to the 3' prime end of the transfer RNA. So this enzyme adds CCA specifically at the 3' prime end of the tRNA. Now just to make it more explicit, there is no template involved in this reaction. So this CCA adding enzyme is a template independent RNA polymerase. After this CCA adding enzyme adds CCA to the transfer RNA in the nucleus, this transfer RNA is transported to cytoplasm. Now in the cytoplasm, there is an enzyme called amino acyl tRNA synthetase, which processes the transfer RNA for the next step, which is to attach it with an amino acid. So specifically, there is only one of this enzyme for all the transfer RNA. Now if there is only one enzyme for all tRNAs, how does it know which amino acid it should attach to a specific transfer RNA? Now this enzyme cannot base its specificity towards the transfer RNA based on this anticodon region, because then you would need 61 different enzymes, given that there are 61 different tRNAs that code for a specific amino acids. But we only have this one enzyme. So how does it know which amino acid should go with which transfer RNA? Well, it turns out that the tRNA synthetases recognize specific tRNA structure in the transfer RNA and that is this discriminator region and the anticodon loop region. 
but not the anticodon itself. And once it recognizes this, it binds the transfer RNA, and then the enzyme takes an ATP and its appropriate amino acid and attaches them together. And then the pyrophosphate is released in this process, which provides the energy for this reaction. So you get AMP and the amino acid complex. And we can take a look at the molecular structure of this complex, where the amino acid is attached to the AMP. This first step of catalyzing this transfer of adenosine to the amino acid is called adenylylation. In the second step of this process, the 3 prime, or even sometimes the 2 prime hydroxyl of the tRNA, attacks the carbon of this complex. And this amino acid is then attached to the end of this CCA. And this amino acid containing tRNA is what pairs with the mRNA during the translation process at the ribosome. And that's the process of how the uncharged transfer RNA gets charged with an amino acid. And this is all the necessary introduction for translation.